Hello and welcome to a special Car Dealer Live. My name is James Batchelor and today I'm very pleased to be chatting to the winner of the 2021 Car Dealer Top 100 sponsored by CarWow. Now the Top 100 is a unique list of the most profitable car dealers in the UK and pitches franchise dealers against independent dealers and ranks them on how much money they have made. Topping this year's list, making it the most profitable dealer in the UK, is for a second year running Arnold Clark. Joining me to chat more about this is Arnold Clark CEO Eddie Hawthorne. Hello Eddie. Hi James, how are you? I'm very well thank you, really lovely to have you on. Um, now firstly congratulations, um, you finished in first place with a an EBITDA of figure of uh, 354 million on a turnover of 3.8 billion last year. Um, with everything that's happened in the past 12 months, I mean, you must be very happy and proud about this. Very happy, James, and very proud of the staff. I mean, uh, our staff have worked tremendously, tremendously hard over the last 18 months um, and just taken every, everything that was thrown at them. And, uh, and we've managed to, to work our way through this and, and genuinely have a, have a really great performance. Yeah, yeah. And of course, nobody, you know, this time last year, nobody could have predicted we'd have to go through another lockdown as well. So it, for staff, it really has been a year, a topsy-turvy year, hasn't it, of, of sort of starting and stopping again? Yeah, it's been a wee bit of the hokey-cokey. We're in, we're out, and that's inside, outside. Um, I mean, genuinely, when we shut the business in uh, March 2020, um, it took us about three months to to get it fully operational and open again once we were able to do that. Um, and we just got everybody back to work um, that was coming back to work uh, by the end of October. Um, and then the 5th of November, we're locked down again. Um, got a couple of weeks off at Christmas. And then uh, the first three months of uh, 2021, we were all locked down. And uh, so, yeah, it's been a it's been a real challenge for for the staff, uh, for customers, for in fact, for everybody. I don't think anybody's actually been in this situation before, James. Yeah. Um, I mean, unlike a lot of dealers, um, you you did use the furlough sc scheme, of course, but you didn't use it throughout all every single lockdown. So that's the sign of a very strong business, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, to to be to be honest, James. I mean, we used it. We used it in the first lockdown, really, um, purely because, like like everybody else and every other business, we had no idea what was around the corner. Um, and at its peak, we had twelve thousand staff on furlough. Um, and yes, we did get a, a significant amount of money from the job retention scheme, which every penny went to the employees. Um, and uh, and genuinely that uh, that that really just supported about two months payroll um, and then once we were able to get everybody back we we aimed for October because the original furlough scheme was closing in October so everybody um, and it was really our apprentices that were the last ones back um, they they were back in October um, once we turned the year we just, as a board, we decided that we had had a good recovery. We we did have uh, sufficient funds, um, and although we did furlough some people in 2021, we didn't claim anything from the government. Mm. Um, I, I think if there's if there's one thing that has really been proved over the past 18 months, and that's how well how resilient the motor trade is, despite some you know, some crippling problems and restrictions imposed on it. Um, since your last set of accounts, the year before, um, how different is Arnold Clark of 2020, 2021? Um, I mean, what have been the main developments in the past year? Um, well, we're, we're uh, slimmer, leaner, fitter, um, a wee bit more agile than we were before. Um, but genuinely, our, our, main, uh, our main development has been uh, the digital journey that we have with our customers. Um, we've been working on this for a number of years, James. And, and if there was anything good to come out of the, the pandemic, then our digital journey and the acceptance of it by our customers was probably the best thing that we could have had. Um, and 
um, that has seen us through a, a number of uh, of challenging times where we were still able to communicate and still able to to do business with our customers. Mm. I know it's difficult to put a sort of a figure on it, but do you do you do you know of a figure of in terms of the number of people who start their journey digitally and then come into the showroom? Um, I think. Um, now, I should know this, James, because um, our marketing department just told me this yesterday. Um, <laughs> but uh, obviously, I was paying full attention when they told me this. Um, but it is about two thirds of our customers are starting uh, their journey digitally now. Um, and whether that's on reservation or whether that's on live chat or whether that's building their own deal, um, and un unfortunately, it's two thirds now, but it's dropped down to two thirds because in January it was a hundred percent. But still, still, that's still an extraordinary figure, though, isn't it? Two thirds of people who feel yeah. confident enough to start their journey online and then get some reassurance and ask those questions face to face in, in a showroom. I think um, I think what makes a difference, um, and and this is this the. the the same for all the motor trade, uh, James, is that, you know, we can transact in a digital world, but we're here physically if you've got a problem. And I think that's what gives customers confidence. Um, I, I think you said uh, the, the last time we spoke, this time last year, you were hoping to sort of sell more cars than you did in 2019. Is that looking the case or have there been some restrictions that really kicked in? Um, to be fair, um, I'm... I'm a wee bit, be, we are a wee bit behind on uh, on new cars for the obvious reasons. Um, 2019, we did about 63, 64,000 new cars. We're not going to get anywhere near that sort of figure this year. Uh, overall, we did about 320,000 cars in 2019. And this year, um, with a good wind, um, which we certainly have today in Scotland, but with a good wind, um, we're going to get to about 300,000 cars for 2021. The turnover will be roughly similar, but that's because the, the, the value of cars have went up. Well, yes. I mean, that, that sort of you sort of, um, sort of uh, guess my next question, really, which is, I mean, used cars is an area which you excel in, but this year has been, I mean, it's been crazy for used cars, hasn't it? So, I mean, as, as, as the leader of the top 100, what's your take on the used car market at the moment? Um, I don't think you could, you could print what my take is, James. Um, in 35 years, I have never seen anything like this. Never. Um, I mean, we've had weeks, if not almost a year, of constant values increasing. Um, and that's, that's just unheard of for a product which normally goes the other way in value. Um, so, so genuinely, that has, that, that's given us a bit of a, a shift in, in mentality in terms of how we operate. Um, we're still trying to operate at pace and uh, turn our cars around as quickly as possible. Um, but again, there isn't such that pressure on it. But uh, I keep pinching myself every month just to see if, uh, if this is real. But uh, it is real. And uh, it's the new environment that we're living. Um, so this year will be a very good year for Arnold Clark. Mm. Now, you're one of the biggest dealer groups in the UK. So um, sourcing stock must come easy to you, mustn't it? Or has it been really hard? Um, it's been okay, James. It's been okay. Um, I mean, we've got we've got um, some well-established areas of supply, um, and we we have our own purchasing unit, um, and we have our own uh, purchasing unit with customers as well. So um, that's that's a tap that we can that we we can turn on and off as and when we need it. I mean, right at this moment in time, um, we're sitting with with uh, more cars than we've ever sat with. Um, We've now got about 38,000 cars in stock. So, which is probably about 10,000 more than we would normally have. So is that purely because you're trying to buy as many as you can to, to, to supply the demand or has something changed? A bit of both. Um, we're, we've, we've got to keep feeding that demand and I can't sell tarmac, James. 
<laughs> well, it could be something. Well, you I could, could, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think another crazy thing about what's happening at the moment is that customers seem to be perfectly happy paying the prices, don't they? Um, so yeah. they've, they've got confidence and they are willing to, to transact. I mean, uh, I think there's there's always been that there's always been that concern for customers. Um, where potentially they've taken finance on their car and their car uh, drops a, a bit quicker um, than the, the finance repayment and they've got a bit of negative equity. That is not the case at the moment. Um, there is no negative equity. The car is worth a lot more. Um, and we're seeing customers with no negative equity changing their car and walking away with cash back. So it is a time to change, uh, to change cars. Yeah. Um, I mean, over the past 12 months, we've really seen the, the growth of the purely online used car retailers. Um, in many ways, they're doing things which you and other big dealer groups have been doing for quite a while. Uh, do they pose a threat to your business? And are you worried about them? No. It, because you're, you're, you're already doing it, aren't you? Yeah, That's we're, we're already doing it. I mean, yeah. if anything... If anything, they're making it easier or they're making it cheaper for me to advertise. I don't need to advertise as much. Yeah. I know it is, it, but it's, it is a source of constant fascination of how uh, if you throw enough money at something, um, you can supposedly make it a success. But in many ways, they're doing things which the, the motor trade have been doing for a long time, but they, they've, got, they, they've, got, they've got the money to shout about it, haven't they? Well, they do, James. And I mean, I think one of your points earlier on was, you know, the, how resilient the motor trade is. Well, we're, we're all used to, to working on thin margins. You know, there's not a lot of margin in, uh, in the used car operations. Or, or any operations. Um, yes, we make a, a, a lot of money, but but there but there's a lot of sales that go in and a lot of effort that goes in in terms of volume to make that. But the margins are quite small, um, and I think that's what makes a lot of a lot of the motor trade very resilient and very nimble on their feet. So um, a lot of dealers have have uh, have good used used car operations. A lot of dealers have good digital. Um, interaction with the customer um, and really what's really strong for us and I think a lot of dealer groups is is the customer loyalty our customers are coming back to us yeah I mean I'd just like to quickly talk about new cars because of course the the, the accounts um, that everyone's put in for the for the last year of course predate everything that's been happening over the summer with the chip shortage and etc um, are you weathering the storm well on this? I mean, are you having to turn customers away or are customers prepared to wait? I mean, what's the situation for you? I think, I think James, it, it, it depends on the franchise and it depends on the customer. I mean, what, what, we are, what we're on just now in terms of the trade is we're on a journey with customers where every day a customer can be prepared to wait because they know that they can't get it. They can't get the vehicle any quicker. And as long as they've got an order in the system, the manufacturer will eventually get to that order. Um, so whether they've got the order with ourselves or another dealer group, as long as they've got that, then you've got customers who don't want to wait. Um, and you know they are finding it particularly difficult. Um, and then we've also got some, some real communication issues between the manufacturer and ourselves. And I, I don't think we are alone in this, this area. But again, it's, it's no one's fault. Um, the manufacturing process is a very slick process, but the minute you interrupt that, you interrupt the, the, the communication systems. So we are finding that we're getting cars that are turning up that we weren't expecting and cars that we weren't ex were expecting not turning up. And that's pretty difficult to manage with customers, James, and keep them, keep them on board. Um, but you know, to be fair, touch wood, the staff are doing a good job on that. Mm. Do you... Can you see um, everything getting back to normal sort of in the summer? Or is there such a thing as normal anymore? Have the last 18 months shown us that there is no normal? <laughs> I think uh, every month that passes, James, uh, what, what passed for normal is just disappearing. Um, will it get back to, to what it was pre-COVID? Probably not. Um, I don't think so. I think... Um, I think car values have now reached a level where 
um, whether that's new or you uh, used, they'll 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 remain at that level if not go up a little bit. Um, I think everybody in the industry is suffering from staff shortages, staff uh, vacancies, um, and we're not alone in that. All the other industries have that. Um, and then it's very difficult when you're trying to build new new dealerships or you're trying to build new projects. There's shortage. I think the common word, or the common theme here is shortage, James. <laughs> There's a shortage of everything, um, whether that be microchips, cladding, whatever staff. Um, it's just going to be a while before that corrects itself in the market. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we were talking to Robert Forrester about this, and he said that the, so the current new car shortage is probably the best thing that's happened to motor trade for, for 50 odd years. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as saying that, but the, the industry has had a problem with oversupply, hasn't it? And what's happening recently has sort of balanced that out a bit, hasn't it? Yes, yeah, it definitely has. And I mean, I think um, if you speak to, to any manufacturer C, CFO, um, this was probably the perfect storm that they were always waiting for. Um, you know, we're actually making more money selling less cars, um, but nobody would ever take the risk of actually doing that. Yeah. Um, now, you've been in the, in the hot seat for 20 odd years. I don't want to remind you of that. Sorry. But Thanks you've... very much, James. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I started off as a young boy. I don't have any bags and I had black hair, but yeah. Right. You're looking good. It's fine. Oh, thanks, James. Thanks. Um, now, it's terrible when you have to fish for a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> now, what is, what is your management style? And um, are, are you of the view that a a successful business such as Arnold Clark is is down to having a strong management team. Yes, yeah, it's it, it, the strong management team, management by walkabout and communication with the staff, open communication, transparent communication. All through lockdown, um, we were very uh, communicative with our staff. We we were transparent. We told them the problems that we were trying to overcome. We told them what we were doing, when we were doing it. Um, and I'm not going to say it put their minds at ease, but it was probably one less thing to worry about um, with the whole pandemic. Um, and that has definitely um, stood us in good stead with, uh, with, with our staff going forward. And we've continued that communication. Um, so now that, it, now that I'm able to, I'm able to go out and about the dealerships and, uh, and visit the dealerships uh, again. Um, and... And it's actually good to be back in there. Um, we're not having to do it on a team's call. No, I think uh, I think everyone would agree with you on that. Um, finally, um, to the dealers wa watching this, wanting to succeed and, and post a strong profit next year, I mean, what is your advice to have a, a good business model? Keep it simple and keep to the basics. Yeah, that simple. Simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't let anybody else spend your money, James. <laughs> Yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> well, hopefully we're going to be talking again this time next year. But um, in the meantime, uh, huge congratulations again. And thanks for joining us, Eddie. Thanks, James. Well, that's it for today's Car Dealer Live. Uh, until next time, thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.